Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Uh, this will be the reserve compartment, Mr. Secretary. Ah, yes, yes, definitely. This will do. It has an air to it. Uh, we thought perhaps the corner seat over there. Yes, he likes to face the engine. Nice view. Push button service. Excellent. The old carriage is splendid. He may want to thank you personally. You'll be on the train, I suppose. I'm afraid not, Mr. Secretary. Uh, we're on our usual run in the other direction. Ah, we shall be passing each other then. So we will. At 8.57... Precisely. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Many women say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease marks. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. International fashion models like Jan Bishop care for their complexion with Lux Beauty Soap. I know of no other beauty soap that could care for my complexion as well as Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. final episode of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel prevent disaster striking again and put a stop to a diabolical train of events. Mrs. Peel, searching for the missing John Steed, had called at Chase Halt to enlist the help of old crew, the self-appointed owner of the station. They hadn't got a lot further forward, and another special security man, George Warren, had been killed. But the train from Norbera had made an unscheduled stop at Chase Halt, and Mrs. Peel had bundled old crew aboard. They'd begun a systematic search of the train, hoping to find Steed. But Steed was held captive in the galley, firmly handcuffed to a steel chair. The ticket collector, who turned out to be the arch-villain of the piece, was explaining to Steed how he intended to kill the Prime Minister. Yes, Mr. Steed, 8.57. At that time, we'll be running through Durbridge Station. Durbridge. Population, 2,413. A principal industry, manufacturer of glass eyes for teddy bears. Fame, non-existent. But after tonight, there won't be a person in the civilized world who hasn't heard of it. After tonight. After I've pressed this button at 8.57. The ticket collector's hand hovered over the button. A bomb, Mr. Steed. Your prime minister is sitting on a bomb. Activated from this train. You'll press the button as the train starts. At top speed. We shall be a mile away by the time it explodes. <sighs> the end of a hard road. A long road. 21,214 miles to be exact. Shuttling back and forth. Mobile headquarters. Ingenious. Defies detection. Nice way to make contact as well. Our agent merely bored a train. What could be more innocent? Very ingenious. Just another few miles, Mr. Steed. That's all. Old crew, out in the corridor, had been trying to find the ticket collector. He followed an attendant who approached the restaurant car and gave a knock that was obviously a signal. Old crew advanced, tried the handle of the door. It was locked. Crew thought he'd better find Mrs. Peel and report. Whilst inside the restaurant car, the attendant walked through to the galley. It could be trouble, sir. 
What do you mean, trouble? We're almost there. It's the uh, woman who lost five pounds there. What about her? She's on the train in compartment 4767. Oh, I see. A friend of yours, Steve. Yes, very good friend, actually. Well, we must take care of her. The bride is still on the train, isn't she, Groom? Next compartment. Splendid. I'll talk to her. The collector turned to some rather complicated mechanism that stood on a table near the bomb button, fiddled with it, and spoke into a small microphone. The bride, in her compartment, heard an urgent whisper from the air vent above her head. We have an enemy in the next compartment. The woman who is always prying upon us. See to it. Kill her now. The bride seemed to show no surprise at all. She merely got up, took an automatic from her handbag, and slipped into the corridor. Mrs. Peel appeared to be dozing when the door of her compartment stood open. Oh, so it's you. It'll be a pleasure. The bride leveled the gun. Mrs. Peel swung an elegant leg and kicked the gun out of her hand. <laughs> As though with a continuation of the same movement, Mrs. Peel launched herself across the compartment, butting the bride squarely in the midriff with her head. <laughs> Thoroughly winded, the bride collapsed. Mrs. Peel grabbed her and threw her into the corridor. <laughs> You would have done better to have stayed in your do not disturb compartment. So I think if we tuck you under the seat, you might stay out of trouble. In the operation galley of the train, the ticket collector had heard the sounds of the attack and realized that the bride had got the worst of it. John Steve grinned. Hooray! Bravo! Oh, sorry. My patriotism got the better of me. I, I do apologize. Groom, you'd better go and deal with things. See, a pleasure. Nothing but a pleasure. The groom left the galley, pausing only to pick up what looked like an innocent tray of tea things. Meanwhile, old crew had found Mrs. Peel storing the bride under a seat. Uh, Mrs. Peel! Mrs. Peel! There are rules about these things, you know! Well, I'm just keeping British Railways tidy. Yeah, but, but what happened? We had a difference of opinion. We didn't agree. Uh, what about? Well, whether she should shoot me or not. How are you, crew? Oh, Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Peel. Bum, diddy, bum, 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 bum. Hmm. I like it. It's catchy. I can't see it making the top ten. Oh, no, 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 you, you don't understand. The dog in the restaurant, the one at least due to the galley. It's locked, but there's a special knock to get in. Don't tell me, let me guess. Boom, diddy, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Right, stay here. Keep an eye on the bride and leave this to me. <laughs> Mrs. Peel made it to the restaurant car in double quick time. She approached the door. Come, Daddy, come, 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 come. See? The groom stood in the doorway. He held a tray in one hand, the teapot on the tray with the other. The spout of the teapot pointed straight at Mrs. Peel. A teapot gun. Dinky little things, really, isn't it? Very effective for hold-ups in cafes, trains, things where orthodox guns are a bit obvious. Do back up, dear lady. I'm afraid you've been the teeniest bit too inquisitive. Shouldn't you be at a wedding or something? Oh, that's just a disguise, a cover. They call me the groom. A session with me and people forever hold their peace, so to speak. Fascinating. I have a compulsive death wish. Other people's. Really? Uh, Mrs. Peel made a sudden movement backwards. The bullet from the teapot gun missed Mrs. Peel by a fraction of an inch. It shattered the glass of the window behind her. Vandalism. But it should show you that I mean business. Open the door. The door? Yes, that one. The outside one. Much nicer if your death looks like an accident. An unfortunate fall. Funny, really, being cast as the groom when at heart I'm really an undertaker. Now, let's get this over with. Mrs. Peel appeared considerably affected. She swayed as though about to faint. Oh, dear, the weaker sex. What? <laughs> Mrs. Peel delivered a beautiful uppercut. The teapot gun flew out of the open doorway. The tray crashed to the floor. Mrs. Peel waded in. The groom grabbed and the struggle attempted to push Mrs. Peel through the door. She replied by bringing her knee up viciously. The groom doubled up, tried to regain his balance by reaching for the door. He missed, tottered on the brink, and fell out of the carriage into the night. Best man, I think. Mrs. Peel reached out and grabbed the door, pulling it closed. Oh, Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Peel, don't you know it's extremely dangerous to lean out of a train while it's in motion? We're not quite finished with danger. The restaurant car. They made their way to the restaurant car. The door had been left open. The train roared on into the night. Do you happen to have the right time, Mr. Peel? I make it so 855. Another couple of minutes and the two trains will pass. We're running right on time. Splendid. The corrector removed the cover from the bomb button. 
his fingers tapped on the table, he could hardly keep from pressing the button prematurely. Mrs. Peel, moving through the restaurant car to the galley, found herself facing one of the attendants. She said, Evening. And hit him. Watch out, Steve! The other one's got a gun! Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Steve gripped the steel chair with his handcuffed hand and swung it at the other attendant. Emma Peel sprang forward, grabbed a wire mesh in tray, and inverted it over the button. The ticket collector thrust her finger through the mesh, trying to press the button. Oh, no, no! no. It's now! Now! The time is now! John Steed got an arm round the ticket collector's throat and pulled him steadily away from the control panel. The other train roared by and vanished into the night. The danger's passed. The ticket collector collapsed in a heap. And at that point, old crew entered. The communication cord! Pull the communication cord! Yeah! Oh! Old crew pulled that communication cord. About ten yards of the stuff came away in his hand. Oh, not in trains! They don't build him like they used to. Disgusting, I call it disgusting. Delightful, Steve. Plenty of traffic on the road. Yes, people should drive more carefully in this wet weather. There you are. I mean, look at that idiot. We could park the car over there at the railway siding. And look what that poster says. Huh? It's safer, safer by, by rail. rail. <laughs> <laughs> comes a new way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. New fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for Keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. Great teeth are forever. Great teeth are for Keeps. New family fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Abnall, say. I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out spotlessly clean. Yes, Omo cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.